The Contendings of Horus and Seth from the Chesterbidi Papyrus No. 1 Translated by Professor Raymond Oliver Faulkner The Divine Debate of Kingship There came to pass the judging of Horus and Seth, the two mysterious of form, great, mightiest princes that ever came into being, in that a certain little child sat before the master of the universe, Ra, claiming the kingly office of his father Osiris. Of him, beautiful of appearances, the son of Ptah, enlightens the netherworld with his comeliness. While Thoth was presenting the eye to the mighty prince who was in Heliopolis. Then spoke Shu, the son of Ra, before Atum, the mighty prince who is in Heliopolis. All justice is powerful. Do it, saying, give the kingly office to Horus. Then spoke Thoth, to the divine Aeneid, or the Pesaget, Right, a million times right. And Isis, mother of Horus, uttered a great cry, and rejoiced exceedingly, and she came and stood before the master of the universe, and she said, North wind, go quickly to the west, and bear the good tidings to Anophris. Then spoke Shu, the son of Ra, The presenting of the eye is the justice of the Aeneid. Then said the master of the universe, What signifies you taking actions yourselves alone? But the Aeneid said, He has taken the royal name ring of Horus, and they have set the white crown upon his head. Then the master of the universe, silent a long space of time, being angry with the Aeneid. Thereupon Seth, the son of Nut, said, Let him be cast forth with me, that I may cause you to see my hand prevailing over his in the presence of the Aeneid, for none know any means of dispossessing him. But Thoth spoke to him, We shall not be able to discern the guilty one. Shall the office of Osiris be given to Seth, while Osiris' son, Horus, is still alive? And Ra Kurakti was exceedingly angry, for that it was the wish of Ra to give the kingly office to Seth, great of strength, son of Nut. And Onuris, he who brought the distant one, uttered a great cry before the face of the Aeneid, saying, What are we to do? Thereupon Atum, the mighty prince who is in Heliopolis, said, Let Benebjedet, the spirit of Ra, Osiris, Geb, and Shu from Mendes, the great god, the living, be summoned in order that he may pronounce the judgment upon the two striplings. So they brought Benebjedet, the great god who dwells in Setit, the island of Sahel in the first cataract, before Atum, together with Tatanin, and said to him, Pronounce judgment upon the two striplings, and stop them from standing thus and wrangling every day. And Benebjedet, the great god, the living, made answer to that which he had said, Let us not take action in our ignorance, but let there be sent a letter to Neith, the mighty, the god's mother. What she shall say is what we will do. Thereupon the Aeneid spoke to Benebjedet, the great god, the living. Judgment was made between them in the primeval time in the hall of a loan of truth. Thereupon the Aeneid also spoke to Thoth in the presence of the master of the universe. Make you a letter to Neith, the mighty, the god's mother, in the name of the master of the universe, the bull which dwells in Heliopolis. Thereupon Thoth said, I will do so, verily I will do so. Therefore he sat down to make the letter, and he said, The king of upper and lower Egypt, Ra'atum, the beloved of Thoth, the lord of the two lands in Heliopolis, the sun which enlightens the two lands with his comeliness, the Nile, mighty in taking possession, Ra Horakti, while Neith, the mighty, the god's mother who enlightens the first face, still lives and is in health and flourishes. The living manifestation of the master of the universe, the bull in Heliopolis, is the good king of Tamari, the beloved land. To this effect, I, thy servant, spend the night in the thought for Osiris, taking counsel with the two lands every day, while Sobek, your son, endures forever. What are we to do with these two men, 
who these 80 years past have been before the tribunal, and none know how to pronounce judgment upon these two, may you write to us regarding what shall we do? Thereupon Neith, the mighty, the god's mother, sent a letter to the Aeneid, saying, Give the office of Osiris to his son Horus, and do not do those great acts of wickedness which are not in their place, else I shall be angry, and the heaven shall crash to the ground. And let it be spoken unto the master of the universe, the bull which dwells in Heliopolis. Also, double you to Seth in his possessions, and give to him Anat and Astarte, your two daughters, and set Horus in the place of his father, Osiris. The letter of Neith, the mighty, the god's mother, reached the Aeneid as they sat in the hall of Horus, prominent of horns, and the letter was put in the hand of Thoth, and Thoth read it out before the master of the universe and before the entire Aeneid. And they spoke with one mouth, This goddess is in the right. Now the master of the universe was angry with Horus, and he said to him, You are feeble in your limbs, and this kingly office is too great for you, you stripling, the taste of whose mouth is bad. And Honorus was angry a million times, and so was the entire Aeneid, even the thirty. And the god Babe, the baboon, rose up, and he spoke to Ra Horakti, Your shrine is empty. And Ra Horakti was aggrieved, and this taunt which had been spoken to him, and he laid himself down upon his back, and his heart was very sore. And the Aeneid went forth, and they cried aloud before the face of the god Babe, and they said to him, Get you out! This crime that you have done is exceedingly great! And so they went to their tents, and the great god passed the day laying upon his back in his bark, and his heart was very sore, and he was alone. And after a long space, Hathor, the lady of the sycamore, came and stood before her father, the master of the universe, and she uncovered her nakedness before his face, and the great god laughed at her. And then he rose up, and he sat down with the great Aeneid, and he said unto Horus and Seth, Speak concerning yourselves. Thereupon Seth, great of strength, the son of Nut, said, As for me, I am Seth, the greatest of strength among the Aeneid. I slay the enemy of Ra daily, being in front of the bark of millions, and none other god is able to do it. I am entitled to the office of Osiris. Then the Aeneid said, Seth, the son of Nut, is in the right. Then Onurus and Thoth cried aloud, saying, Shall the office be given unto a brother on the side of the mother while the son of the body is yet alive? Then spoke Benedjedet, the great god, the living, and said, Shall the office be given unto this stripling while Seth, his elder brother, is yet alive? Now the Aeneid cried aloud before the face of the master of the universe, and they said to him, what are these words that you have spoken, which are not worthy that they should be heard? Then spoke Horus, the son of Isis, This is not good that I should be cheated in the presence of the Aeneid, and that the office of my father Osiris should be taken away from me. And now Isis was very angry with the Aeneid, and she made an oath to the god in the presence of the Aeneid, saying, as my mother, the goddess Neith, lives, and as Tatanin, high of plumes, Kerber of horns of the god, lives, these words shall be placed before a tomb, the mighty prince who is in Heliopolis, and likewise before Kepri, who dwells in the bark. Then spoke the Aeneid to her, Be not vexed. His right shall be given to him who is in the right, and all that you have said shall be done. And Seth, the son of Nut was angry with the Aeneid when they said these words to Isis, the mighty, the god's mother. And Seth spoke to them, I will take my scepter of four thousand and five hundred pounds, and I will kill one of you each day. And Seth followed this with an oath made to the master of the universe, saying, I will not contend in the tribunal while Isis is in it. And so Ra Horakti spoke to them, Cross you over to the island in the midst, and judge you between them, and say to Auntie the ferryman, Do not ferry across any woman that resembles Isis. And the Aeneid crossed over to the island of the midst, and they sat down and ate bread. Thereupon Isis came, 
and she drew darkness over Auntie the ferryman as he sat near his boat, and she had changed herself into an aged woman. She approached and bowed down as she wore a little ring of gold that was on her finger. And she spoke to him, I have come to you that you may ferry me across to the island in the midst, for I have come with this jar of flour for a little lad. He has been looking after some cattle in the island of the midst for five days until today, and he is hungry. And he spoke to her, It is said to me, Do not ferry across any woman. And she spoke to him, Was it not said to you on account of Isis? This is what they said, correct? And he spoke to her, What will you give me, that I may ferry you across to the island in the midst? Spoke to him Isis, I will give you this loaf of bread. Thereupon he spoke to her, What is it to me, your loaf of bread? Shall I ferry you across to the island in the midst, when it all be said to me, Ferry no woman across for the sake of your bread loaf? Thereupon she spoke to him, I will give you this ring of gold which is in my hand. And he spoke to her, Let me have the ring of gold. And she gave it to him. Therefore he ferried her across to the island in the midst. And while she was going beneath the trees, she looked and she saw the Aeneid, as they sat and ate bread in the presence of the master of the universe in his bark. And Seth looked and he saw her, and she was coming there from afar. Thereupon she uttered an incantation with her magic, and she changed herself into a maiden of fair of limbs, and there was none like her of the entire land. And Seth loved her right away. Thereupon Seth rose up, and he sat down and ate bread with the great Aeneid, and then he went to overtake her, and no one had seen her except him. Now Seth, the son of Nut, stood behind a tree, and he cried to her, and he said to her, I am here with you, fair maiden. And she spoke to him, Nay, my great lord, as for me, I was the wife of a herdsman of cattle, and bare to him a male child. And my husband died, and the stripling came to care after the cattle of his father. Then a foreigner came, and he sat down in my byre, and thus spoke to my son, I will beat you, and I will take away the cattle of your father, and I will cast you away. And Seth spoke to her, Shall the cattle be given to the foreigner, while the son of the good man is alive? Immediately Isis changed herself into a kite, and she flew, and she perched on top of an acacia, and she called to Seth, and she said to him, Weep for yourself, it is your own mouth that has said it, it is your own cleverness which has judged you. What ails you now? And Seth the son of Nut stood weeping, and he went to the place where Ra Hurakti was, and he wept. Thereupon Ra Hurakti spoke to him, What ails you now? There Seth spoke to him, That evil woman came against me, that she might beguile me once again, having changed herself into a fair maiden before my face. And she said to me, As for me, I was the wife of a herdsman of cattle, and he died, and I bare for him a male child, and he is after some cattle belonging to his father. And a foreigner visited my buyer and that of my son, and I gave him bread. And after many days following upon these things, the stranger spoke to my son, I will beat you, and I will take away the cattle of your father, and they shall become mine. Thus he spoke to my son. So she said to me, Thereupon Ra Horakti spoke to him, And what did you say to her? And Seth spoke to him, I said to her, Shall the cattle be given to the foreigner while the son of the good man is yet alive? And so I said to her, One shall beat the face of the stranger with a stick, and he shall be cast forth, and your son shall be set in the place of his father. So I said to her. And Ra Horakti spoke to him, But now look, you have judged yourself. What ails you now? And Seth spoke to Ra, let Ante the ferryman be brought, and let a great punishment be afflicted upon them, saying, Why did you let her cross? So shall it be said to him. Thereupon Ante the ferryman was brought before the Aeneid, and they removed the soles of his feet. And Ante gave up the gold on this day in the presence of the great Aeneid, saying, Gold has been made to me into an abomination for my city. 
Thereupon the Aeneid crossed back over to the western track, and they sat down upon the mountain. And when it was the evening, Rahurakti and Atum, the lord of the two lands in Heliopolis, sent to the Aeneid, saying, What are you doing still sitting here? As for these two striplings, you will cause them to end their lives in the tribunal. My letter reaches you. You shall set the white crown upon the head of Horus, the son of Isis, and you shall promote him to the place of his father, Osiris. And Seth was angry, rightly so. And the Aeneid spoke to Seth, Why are you angry? Shall not one do as a tomb the lord of the two lands in Heliopolis and Ra Horakti have said? Thereupon they established a white crown upon the head of Horus, the son of Isis. And Seth cried out before the face of the Aeneid, and he was vexed and said, Shall the office be given to my little brother, while I, his elder brother, am yet alive? Thereupon he made an oath, saying, They shall remove the white crown from the head of Horus, the son of Isis, and they shall cast him into the water, that I may contend with him regarding the office of rule. And Ra Horakti did accordingly. And Seth spoke to Horus, Come, let us change ourselves into hippopotamuses, and let us plunge into the waters which are in the great green. And whoso shall emerge within a period of three months of days, to him shall the office not be given. Therefore they plunged in those two. And Isis sat weeping and said, Seth has killed Horus my son. Thereupon she took a quantity of yarn and she made a cord, and she took a pound of copper and she melted it down into weapons of the water, and she tied it to the rope, and she threw it into the water in the place of the plunging in which Horus and Seth were made. And the barb, the hooked weapon, bit into the majesty of her son Horus. And Horus cried aloud, saying, Come to me, my mother Isis, my mother. Call your barb that it loosen from me, for I am Horus, the son of Isis. And Isis cried aloud, and she said to the barb, Loosen you from him. Behold, he is my son Horus, my child. And her barb loosened from him. Then she threw it again into the water and it bit into the majesty of Seth. And Seth cried aloud, saying, What have I done against you, my sister Isis? Call to your bod that it loosen from me, for I am your brother on the side of the mother, O Isis. And she had compassion upon him exceedingly. And Seth called to her again, saying, Did you love the foreigner more than you do your brother on the side of the mother, even Seth? And Isis called to her barb, saying, Loose it from him. Behold, it is the brother of Isis on the side of the mother whom you have bitten. Thereupon the barb loosened itself. Now Horus, the son of Isis, was angry with his mother, and he went forth, and his face was savage like a panther of upper Egypt, and his chopper of sixteen pounds was in his hand, and he removed the head of his mother Isis, and he put it on his chest, and he ascended into the mountain. Thereupon Isis changed herself into a statue of flint which had no head. And Ra Horakti spoke to Thoth, What is this female that has come, and she has no head? And Thoth spoke to Horakti, O oh my good lord, this is Isis, the mighty, the god's mother, and Horus, her son, has removed her head. And Ra Horakti cried aloud and said unto the Aeneid, Let us go and inflict great punishment on this boy. Thereupon the Aeneid descended onto the mountain in order to search for Horus, the son of Isis. Now as for Horus, he was lying under a Shenusha tree in the oasis country. Seth found him and took hold on him, and he threw him on his back now upon the mountain, and he removed his two eyes from their places and buried them upon the mountain in order to illuminate the earth. And the two balls of his two eyes became two bulbs, and they grew into lotuses, Thereupon Seth returned, and he spoke to Rahurakti falsely. I did not find Horus, although he had found him. Thereupon Hathor, the lady of the sycamore, went and she found Horus, and he lay weeping on the desert. Thereupon she took hold on a gazelle, and she milked it, and she spoke to Horus, Open your eye, that I may put milk with therein. Thereupon he opened his eye, and she put the milk therein. She put it in the right eye, and then she put it in the left eye, and she spoke to him, Open thine eye, and he opened his eye, and she saw him, and she found him restored.
Thereupon she went to speak to Ra Korakti. I have found Horus, and Seth had deprived him of his eye, and so I raised him up again, and behold, he is come. Thereupon the Aeneid said, Let Horus and Seth be summoned, in order that judgment may be made between them. Thereupon they were brought before the Aeneid. Then spoke the master of the universe before the great Aeneid to Horus and Seth, Go you, and let what I have said to you be listened to. Eat and drink, and let us be at peace. Cease you from this wrangling thus every day. Therefore Seth happily spoke to Horus, Come, let us pass a happy day in my house. And Horus said to him, I will do so verily, I will do so. And when it was evening, the bed was spread for them, and they lay down. And in the night Seth caused his member to become stiff, and he made it between the loins of Horus. Thereupon Horus put his two hands between his loins, and he caught the seed of Seth. And Horus went to speak to his mother Isis. Come to me, O Isis, my mother. Come and see this which Seth has done to me. And he opened his hand, and he caused her to see the seed of Seth. And she cried out aloud, and she seized her knife, and she cut off his hand, and she cast it into the water. And then she drew out for him a hand like new. Thereupon she took a dab of sweet ointment, and put it upon the member of Horus. Then she caused it to become stiff, it having been put into the pot, and he made his seed to run down into it. Then Isis went with the seed of Horus in the morning to the garden of Seth. And she spoke to the gardener of Seth. What herb is it that Seth does eat here with you? And the gardener spoke to her. He does not eat any herb here except that of lettuce. And Isis put the seed of Horus upon the lettuce. And Seth came after his fashion of every day, and he ate the lettuce which he regularly eats. And he became pregnant with the seed of Horus. And Seth went to speak to Horus. Come, let us go in order that we may contend with you in the tribunal. Thereupon Horus spoke to him, I will do so verily, I will do so. Thereupon these two went to the tribunal, and they stood before the great Aeneid, and it was said unto them, Speak concerning yourselves. Thereupon Seth said, Let there be given to me the office of rule, for as to Horus, the same that stands here before you, I have performed a brave deed of war against him. Thereupon the Aeneid cried aloud, and they belched and spat before the face of Horus. And Horus laughed at them. Horus made an oath to the gods, saying, False is all that which Seth has said. Let the seed of Seth be summoned, that we may see what it will answer. And let my own be summoned as well, that we may see what it will answer. And so Thoth, the lord of divine words, the scribe of truth of the Aeneid, placed his hand upon the arm of Horus, and he said, Come forth, you seed of Seth, and it answered to him from the water in the fen. And then he, Thoth, placed his hand upon the arm of Seth, and he said, Come forth, you seed of Horus. Thereupon it spoke to him, Where shall I come forth? And Thoth spoke to it and said, Come forth from his ear, and it spoke to him, Shall I come forth from his ear, I, who am divine of influence? And so Thoth spoke to it again, Come forth from his forehead. Therefore it came forth from his forehead as a son of gold upon the head of Seth. Now Seth was exceedingly angry, and he stretched forth his hand to lay hold of the son of gold. But Thoth took it away from him and put it as an ornament upon his head. And the Aeneid spoke and said, Horus is in the right, and Seth is in the wrong. And Seth was angry once more, when he heard them cry aloud, Horus is in the right, and Seth is in the wrong. And Seth made a great oath to the gods, saying, They shall not give the office to him until he has been cast forth with me, and we will fashion for ourselves some ships of stone, and we will sail around, we two only. And whoso shall prevail over his fellow, to him shall they give the office of rule. And so Horus fashioned for himself a ship of cedar, and he plastered it with gypsum, and he cast it upon the water at evening. 
and no man who was in the entire land had seen it. And Seth saw the ship of Horus, and he thought it was stone. And he went to the mountain, and he cut off a mountain peak, and he fashioned for himself a ship of stone of one hundred and thirty-eight cubits. And so they both went down into their ships in the presence of the Aeneid. Thereupon the ship of Seth immediately sank in the water, and Seth changed himself into a hippopotamus, and he caused to fonder the ship of Horus. And Horus took his barb, and he threw it at the majesty of Seth. Thereupon the Aeneid spoke to him, Throw it not at him! And so Horus took the weapons of the water, and he placed them in his ship, and he fared down north to the delta, to Sais, to speak to Neith, the mighty, the god's mother. Let judgment be pronounced upon me and Seth, for as much as these eighty years we have been in the tribunal, and none knows how to pronounce judgment upon us. Yet he has been declared in the right against me, but for a thousand times before I have been in the right against him every day. Nor does he regard what the Aeneid has said. I contended with him in the hall of the ways of truth, and I was declared in the right against him. I contended with him in the hall of Horus, prominent of horns, and I was declared in the right against him. I contended with him in the hall of field of reeds, and I was declared in the right against him. I contended with him in the hall of the field of pool, and I was declared in the right against him. And the Aeneid spoke to Shu, the son of Ra. Write in all that he has said, Horus, the son of Isis. Now a speech was made by thought to the master of the universe. Cause a letter to be sent to Osiris, that he may pronounce the judgment upon these two striplings. Then spoke Shu, the son of Ra. Write, a million times right is that which Thoth has spoken to the Aeneid. And so the master of the universe spoke to Thoth. Sit down and make a letter to Osiris, that we may hear what he shall say. And Thoth sat down to complete a letter to Osiris, saying, The bull, lion that hunts for himself, the two goddesses, protecting the gods, curbing the two lands, Horus of gold, inventor of men in the primeval times, king of upper and lower Egypt, bull which dwells in Heliopolis, the son of Ta, fertile of territory, who arose as father of his Aeneid, he eats of gold and all manner of rare gems. May you write to us for what we shall say or do to Horus and Seth, in order that we may not take action in our ignorance. And after many days following these things, the letter reached the king, the son of Ra, great of abundance, lord of plenty, and he cried aloud when the letter was read to him. And then he answered it very quickly and sent it to the place where the master of the universe was together with the Aeneid, saying, Wherefore shall my son be defrauded, seeing that it is I who make you strong, and it is I who made the barley and the spelt to nourish the gods, and even so the living creatures after the gods, and no god nor any goddess found himself able to do it. And the letter of Osiris came onto the place where Ra Horakti was, as he sat with the Aeneid at the bright moment of Hasu. So then it was read in the presence of him of the Aeneid. And Ra Horakti said, Answer you for me this letter very quickly to Osiris, and speak to him in respect of this letter. Suppose you had never come into existence, suppose you had never been born, and the barley and the spelt would still exist. Thereupon the letter of the master of the universe reached Osiris, and it was read out before him. And Osiris sent another letter to Ra Horakti, saying, Exceedingly good is all that you have done you inventor of the Aeneid in very truth, while justice has been suffered to sink within the netherworld. But look at you at this matter yourself. As for this land which is mine, it is full of savage-faced messengers, and they fear not any god nor any goddess. I will cause them to go forth, and they shall fetch the heart of whoever does evil deeds, and they shall be here with me. Moreover, what signifies it that I be resting here in the west, while you are without all of you? Who is there among them stronger than I? And behold, they have invented falsehood in very truth. Is it not so that when Ta, the great, south of his wall, the lord of the Ahtaui, made the sky, 
Did he not speak to the stars which are in it? You shall go to rest in the west every night in the place where the king Osiris is. And after the gods, nobles, and common people shall go to rest also in the place where you are. So said he not to me. Now after many days following upon these things, the letter of Osiris reached the place where the master of the universe was together with the Aeneid. And Thoth received the letter and read it out before Ra Hurakti and the Aeneid. They said, Write in all that he has said he is, he the great of abundance, lord of plenty. And Seth said, Let us be taken to the isle of the midst in order that I may contend with him. And when he went to the island of the mist, and Horus was finally declared in the right over him, thereupon the tomb, the lord of the two lands in Heliopolis, sent to Isis, saying, Bring you Seth, he being fast with bonds. Thereupon Isis brought Seth, he being made fast with bonds as a prisoner. And so a tomb spoke to him, Wherefore you have not allowed judgment to be pronounced upon you but have taken away for yourself the office of Horus. Thereupon Seth spoke to him, Not so, my good lord. Let Horus, the son of Isis, be summoned, and let be given to him the office of his father Osiris. And Horus was brought forward, the son of Isis, and they set the white crown upon his head, and he was set in the place of his father Osiris, and they spoke unto him, You are the good king of Tamari, you are the good Lord of every land, for ever and ever. And Isis cried aloud to her son Horus, saying, You are the good king. My heart is in joy that you enlighten the earth with your comeliness. And Ptah spoke, the great, the south of his wall, the lord of the Achtaui, said, What is it that which shall be done to Seth? For now, behold, Horus has been set upon the place of his father Osiris. Thereupon Ra Hurakti said, Let Seth the son of Nut be given unto me, that he may dwell with me and be as my son, and he shall thunder in the sky and men shall fear him. And so the Aeneid went to speak to Ra Hurakti, Horus the son of Isis is arisen as ruler. And Ra was in joy exceedingly, and he spoke to the Aeneid, Jubilate you to the ground before Horus the son of Isis. And so Isis said, Horus is arisen as ruler, the Aeneid is in festival, heaven is in joy. Then they took the wreaths when they saw Horus, the son of Isis, arisen as the great ruler of Egypt. And the Aeneid, their hearts were in content. The entire earth was in rejoicing when they saw Horus, the son of Isis, the office of his father Osiris, the lord of Jedu. It has come to a happy ending in Thebes, the place of truth.